signs of a toxic relationship are you with a narcissist? Are you? How do you know? Well, let's start out by saying we can't diagnose anyone. This is not meant for diagnosis of anyone else. What it is meant to do is help you see the traits in your relationship. If you are here, something is up, right? You, you are feeling like something is wrong. And this is to help you see what the signs of what a toxic relationship might look like. Number one, you're walking on eggshells. That means that you are always worried about being in trouble, always worried about the other person reacting to something you're doing. You feel like anything you say is wrong. You, no matter which way you turn, something's wrong. Okay. So number two, you are confused in any conflict because it feels like your reality is being twisted. It feels like your, uh, your reality is being told it's not your reality, being gaslit. Okay. Number three, you are required to uh, uh, or have the need to constantly check in with the other person. And there's a lot of trouble if you don't. You don't have any autonomy in your life at all. Number four, you feel sad when your partner jokes with you because the jokes are subtly masked insults or uh, passive aggressive attacks on you. You're the, you're the point of humor. In a, in a not really funny way, in a hurtful way. Number five, you apologize when you did nothing wrong. You didn't really do anything, but you find yourself apologizing. You are um, <clears throat> feeling like it's your fault when you don't see how it could be your fault. And you're actually genuinely apologizing sometimes. Sometimes you're just apologizing to make it stop, right? Okay, number six, you fear uh, the hot and cold treatment. The, the mask slipping, the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde or Ms. Hyde, the, the devaluing. And then, you know, if anything is, you just fear that it's going to be good and bad. Um, and you try to fix things to make sure that they stay good. Um, number seven, hypervigilance over other people's states. In other words, other people's emotional reactions, hypervigilance over people's expressions, people's, and I don't just mean within the relationship, we start to spread this out into the rest of our life. We start to feel that way about everyone. Like we worry everyone is upset with us, but within the relationship, for sure, you start to, uh, you're hypervigilant over everything that seems like it could be wrong. You're worried a lot. Um, number eight, you feel like your partner is not seeing the good in you at all. They're constantly devaluing you. They're constantly um, putting you down, even if it's subtle. Number nine, you feel like you are having sex against your will if if this is a, an intimate relationship or you're doing things against your will uh, by being coerced. Number 10, you are made to feel dirty or wrong for wanting any form of intimacy. Okay, um, number 11, the intimacy, it has lost any connection and you feel in within it that you're having to dissociate to or check out or like tune out to be present, to be there at all and, and be intimate with someone. Number 12, you seem spacey, disassociated, disconnected uh, with any stress that happens in within the relationship or actually it starts to happen with anything in your life because you're learning to disassociate to function, right? Um, number 13, you are making excuses and rationalizing the toxic behavior that is happening toward you. You'll, you'll catch yourself if you really pay attention, actually justifying why they did the thing they did. Um, number, uh, 14, you, uh, you dread the holidays or birthdays because of the sabotage that happens. Number 15, you feel your insecurities are used against you. You feel your vulnerabilities are used against you. You feel like if you tell them something about yourself that, that could upset you or that is difficult for you, that they're going to take that and use it against you. Um, number 16, you are desperately trying to get the old relationship back over and over, just fighting, just struggling, just wishing and hoping you have a false sense of hope that it will come back. All right. Number 17, you are soothing the toxic person after they mistreat you. You're fawning. You are fawning means 
being sensitive and kind and 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 when someone's really toxic to you it means that that you're apologizing you're trying to make sure their feelings are okay okay um number 18 you can't talk about issues within the relationship you just can't not because you can't because if you do it either won't be heard it'll be dismissed or there will be an argument or or denial that happens and it's very frustrating Number 19, you feel shame, okay, about any quality you have. They devalue you to the point where you feel shame for who you are, even your good traits. Number 20, you feel like conversation is shut down and you are not heard, okay? Number 21, you feel like you are treated nicer when you're not alone at home. When you're out together and they treat you nicely in public, but then you come home and the shutdown, the argument, the devaluing starts. Number 22, you are begging them to talk, and basically fawning and pleading to end a silent treatment, to end silence, to end stonewalling, okay? Number 23, you feel like you are too sensitive. You feel like it's your fault because you're so sensitive and you're so, you know, so emotional or whatever. Okay, number 24, you can't express true feelings. They belittle, they minimize, they ignore, and negate you when you express your feelings. Number 25, you are jealous, and you never were before. You're just suddenly jealous, and, and you're, you're, you're like always thinking something's up when you never were that way before. Number 26, you feel compared, like they compare you to other things all the time. Number 27, you are cut off and isolated. Number 28, you are constantly protecting their ego. It's kind of like walking on eggshells, but a particular type where you're constantly going around making sure that that their ego isn't bruised, that they are, that they don't, that they're not, their feelings aren't hurt, whatever. Okay. Number 29, you feel totally and solely responsible for uh, making things good for making things better. You feel like it's your responsibility or you know it's not your responsibility, but you know you're the only one that can do it because the other person won't. <laughs> Number 30, you're feeling like you are an, the one who's toxic. You're told you have the qualities of the toxic person. They are projecting onto you their toxic behavior and they're making it sound like you're the one who do, does it. And you've been gaslit so long this way that you start to believe it's true. Number 31, you have a lot of anxiety, just general anxiety all the time. And, it, and it's not just when you're with them anymore. Number 32, there's body pain and tension. Your body starts to react to this. Your body starts to have physical problems. 33, you feel like you are not enough and can't satisfy the other person in the relationship. You feel down on yourself. Your self-esteem starts to dump. You feel like you're just not enough. All right, number 34, everything feels like a competition with them. Number 35, things you love, you, you hate to do around them. You don't enjoy the things you love together. It's only good when they're not around. All right, number 36, you are afraid to make a decision on your own. You're not, or maybe not, it's not afraid. Maybe it's you feel like you can't make a decision. You feel like your decisions are wrong. You don't trust your, your own judgment. Okay, number 37, you can't identify your boundaries within the relationship anywhere. You can't even see them anymore. Or you can identify them but cannot figure out how to actually have them be heard and listened to. All right, they're crossed. Number 38, you feel responsible for their emotional health. I hear this so often with people with narcissistic partners. They feel they, they feel bad for leaving. Well, they're going to be all alone. They feel bad for emotional and physical health, uh, taking care of that person. All right. Um, number 39, you aren't able to pursue your own dreams. You aren't able to do the things you love. And if you do, they shoot it down. So you have to be very careful and do these things without them either knowing or having much involvement. So you're not able to share these, these dreams that you have in your life with your partner. And number 40, you have lost track of yourself. 
you've lost the sense of who you are. This is a quick list. If some, if you're watching this and you need a checklist, okay, or if you need some validation, or if you need, if you're not sure if what you're feeling is real, there it is. There's 40 things that are signs that something is toxic within your relationship or that the relationship you're in is not good for your life. And these signs, if you watch videos of mine or of anyone's of um, signs of a narcissist or signs of a toxic person, they kind of go hand in hand. You can see how one affects the other. If you have not hit subscribe, do so. If you like this, hit the thumbs up. Check out the channel for other videos that relate to this topic, signs of narcissists, or, or there's a whole playlist on understanding narcissism. Check that out. Um, hopefully that'll give you some validation and some awareness and some, some information to help you get through this and to heal.